This video will deal with geodesy. Geodesy is that part of applied mathematics that deals with the size and shape of the Earth and the various coordinate systems that are used to represent a position on its surface. There are actually three primary surfaces which we must deal with. Those are the actual or topographic surface and the surface of the sea which is also called the geoid. It is a surface of equal gravity potential which closely matches the surface of the sea. It would also be approximated by the water surface that would develop if one could cut into the continents with canals that are connected to the sea. The geoid is an undulating surface with relative highs and lows that differ by over 100 meters. Finally, there is a surface that best describes the Earth and can be developed mathematically by a semi-major axis and a semi-minor axis. This is called the ellipsoid. The semi-major axis is approximately 6,370,000 meters. The semi-minor axis is about 20,000 meters smaller than that. The goal of the geodesist is to find an ellipsoid that best matches the geoid. However, as this scale exaggerated look at the geoid shows us, ellipsoids used for regional areas can be different than those used worldwide. The difference between commonly used ellipsoids is actually on the order of tens of meters. But what you should take away from this is that there are numerous sets of ellipsoid constants that have been defined for regional and global use. The ellipsoid and the geoid are two distinctly different surfaces and because of the undulating nature of the geoid there are varying differences between the two. These separations are represented by n in the figure below and are called the geoid heights. The relationships between the local height, ellipsoid height, and geoid height are given here. You should become familiar with them. As a practical example, let's say we need the WGS84 ellipsoid height for a marker with an MSL height of 896 feet or 273.1 meters. If the geoid height at this point is minus 21 meters, then the ellipsoid height is 252.1 meters. As example two, let's say we need to convert the recorded GPS ellipsoid height to local height before providing to the client. If the recorded height is 100 meters and the geoid height is minus 10 meters, at this location, then the local height is minus 110 meters. Both regional and global geoid models exist which can be used to convert the GPS ellipsoid heights to orthometric or local heights that we desire. We now turn our attention to horizontal coordinates. Latitude and longitude is a convenient system for representing any place on the Earth's surface. Latitudes are lines parallel to the equator while longitude lines, also called meridians, are perpendicular to the lines of latitude and intersect at the north and south pole. The latitude-longitude system requires a mathematically defined shape on which the parallels and meridians will exist, and some defining origin and orientation parameters. The problem is analogous to handing out a hundred clear beach balls and asking each person to inflate their ball and place latitudes and longitude lines on it. What you'll get back will be a hundred beach balls, none of which have exactly the same size and none of which have the same exact placement with regard to the latitude and longitude lines. A datum is an adopted ellipsoid and a precise set of defining parameters for a geographic coordinate system. Regional datums, sometimes called local datums, have as their origin some physical point in reference azimuth. For example, the origin of the NAD 27 North American datum is a set of reference monuments at Meads Ranch, Kansas. World datums, as their name suggests, are geographic systems utilized worldwide, and their coordinates are determined through various means including protracted observations of satellite data. There is no surface origin for global systems and one could make the case that the locations of the ground-based tracking stations represent the origin of such systems. So in summary, datums are geographic coordinate systems using an adopted ellipsoid. Regional datums are defined by an origin point with published coordinates and other information defining its orientation. And world datums are geographic systems used globally where coordinates are typically derived through protracted GPS observations. Some key points here are that coordinates for a point reference to one datum are different from the coordinates of a different datum. The difference between coordinates is often point specific, meaning that the difference varies by location. And finally, providing coordinates is meaningless unless the datum of the coordinates is also provided. You will be typically recording geographic positions reference to the WGS84 datum. However, the client will normally want the geographic coordinates in the local or regional datum. You'll be able to accomplish this conversion using one of several published mathematical transformations called datum shifts. Generally speaking, there are two datum shift methods. One relies on first converting geographic coordinates to another system called ECEF or Earth-Centered Earth-Fixed Coordinates. These ECEF coordinates are adjusted and converted back to latitude and longitude. 
The second method is interpolative in nature. Given specific coordinates, a particular set of datum shift values are applied. Datum shifts in which coordinates are temporarily converted to ECEF coordinates are normally used for small areas. These include the Molodensky datum shift in which the X, Y, and Z are translated and the Bursa-Wolf datum shift which includes rotating the X, Y, and Z around their axis. Black box or interpolative datum shifts are often used for entire countries. Examples include NADCON, which covers the U.S., and NTB2, which covers Canada. In order to simplify the math associated with coordinate systems, geographic coordinates are converted to grid coordinates using what is called map projections. Projections lend themselves well to geometric interpretation, and they can be visualized as planar surfaces. Projections always exhibit distortion. Minimizing this distortion for an area means choosing an appropriate projection type and orienting its surface with respect to the ellipsoid it represents. One desirable characteristic of any projection is to maintain a one-to-one -one relationship between a distance on the projection surface and the distance it represents on the surface of the ellipsoid. The ratio of these two values is called scale factor. There are many types of projections. A transverse Mercator projection is a cylindrical one and a good choice for mapping areas of great north-south extent. A Lambert conformal projection is a conical one which means area of great east-west extent may be mapped with little distortion. Typical geodesy issues to be addressed in seismic surveys include the fact that local control monuments are in local datum coordinates and heights for local control is typically local or orthometric height. We require WGS84 datum coordinates and WGS84 ellipsoid height. So in looking at the big picture in seismic surveying, we see we want to convert monument local heights to ellipsoid heights for use in the reference station using a suitable geoid model. We want to convert monument local datum grid coordinates to geographic coordinates in the WGS84 datum using the appropriate datum shift. We want to convert the stakeout points which are in local datum grid coordinates to geographic coordinates in the WGS84 datum for upload. This means coordinates are downloaded as WGS84 geographics and heights are WGS84 ellipsoid heights. In processing, ellipsoid heights are converted to local heights using an appropriate model. WGS84 geographics are converted to local datum grid coordinates using an appropriate datum shift and projection. Let's finish with a summary of key height and coordinate concepts. There are three heights, local height, also known as MSL or mean sea level height, also known as orthometric height. There is the mathematical surface ellipsoid height, which is used by GPS satellites. And then there's the geoid height, which is the difference between the local and ellipsoid heights. A summary of key coordinate concepts includes the fact that local grid coordinates will normally be supplied from and to the client. Local grid coordinates are converted to WGS84 geographic coordinates using an appropriate datum shift. And recorded positions are WGS84 geographic coordinates and must be converted back to local grid coordinates using the same datum shift. Finally, recorded heights are relative to the WGS84 ellipsoid and must be converted to local height on a point-by-point -point basis using an appropriate geoid model.